Hi everyone, I hope you're all well, having a great day. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of our Pokemon VGC 2019 Battle Series. We are here to Tuesday and we kicked off on our last episode with an X-Ray build that you guys voted to see going forward in the Ultra Series on the YouTube channel poll last week. So we're going to continue on with that today. Just to quickly recap the team and as always the team paste and poker paste are down in the description below if you'd like to check that out for yourselves in your own time outside of this video and try it out if you do try it out make sure to let me know in the comments how you get on with it but just to recap we've got the mega Rayquaza, the xerneas the landris theory and it got the it has got the Z move there, the Tapu Fini, Incineroar, and Serena. So we didn't really get to feature the Serena or the Xerneas yesterday. Uh, so hopefully we can bring that in today's episode and get a little bit of spotlight for those two. And if you missed yesterday's episode, you'd like to go back, catch up with that before coming into today's episode. I'll link a card up there for you. You can check that out and then come back into this one and have a lot of fun with all of us. So let's get some music on. And then we can hop straight into today's episode. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to find an opponent. And as always, guys, if you enjoy this sort of content, make sure to leave a like on the video. Do subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon content. And more importantly than anything else, do leave your comments down in the comment section below because I love and I'll always say this hearing from you guys. And we have a, such a great community here. So, right, music. Before I forget, what are we going to click into? Uh, Cyrus, I guess. And we've got our first opponent of the episode, which is going to be a 17 or 9 rated Japanese player. Right, and they are playing a team of Kyogre, Lunala, Celesteela, Zapdos, Tapu Fini, and Incineroar. Hmm. Just from the rating, it seems like it's going to be a bit of a harder one, but a really nice one to feature. We always want to be featuring these higher rated players. So we've probably got the Primal Kyogre, the Lunala there. There's going to be maybe... It's probably going to be... Tailwind rather than Trick Room here, but we can't discount the Trick Room. The Celesteela is going to be a bit awkward for us to deal with because we don't have much outside of Incineroar to hit that for super effective damage. Uh, we've got the Intimidate support from the Incineroar. We've got the Misty Terrain support from the Tapu Fini. It's probably got Nature's Madness, Icy Wind, things like that. And then Tailwind support from that Zapdos as well. That is pretty threatening as well if we don't really keep it in check. So... There's not many physical attackers on my opponent's team, so the Intimidate support here isn't really ma massively necessary outside of that Celesteela, maybe. Um, Incineroar feels like the most important thing for us, so getting rid of that Kyogre early on is going to be a huge thing for us to do. Um, now, I do probably want to bring Incineroar, I think, here. Um, do we got Xerneas? And try and just cut through the team as fast as I can with Xerneas. Um, bring Tapu Fini is something to switch in on that Kyogre that's going to be a bit threatening. And then the Rayquaza as well in the back. And I think we'll lock in with those. <sighs> and get into this one. One of the things I will say to you guys is when you're going on the battle spot, don't be scared about a rating. Like, I'm getting myself a little bit worked up because I know this, this player that we're about to go into a match with is done a bunch of games they're doing really well so their teams perform really well but don't think about the rating thinking about the rating is where the biggest downfall straight away think about the pokemon that are out in the field right now the things that you need to deal with straight away so we are going to see the tapu finny and the, the celesteela come out for my opponent and uh, we do lead off with our incineral instantly put a little bit of pressure onto that celesteela and the tapu finny there um but the one thing that we have to think about because we've got a pretty easy setup here with our geomancy but we have to be very careful about that finny because it could potentially have haze to really shut us down and stop us being able to do very much so maybe it's not the best idea to go for the geomancy straight away here um, although I do probably want to try and get, um, it's one of those things, if I fake out the Celesteela, the Tapu Fini could switch out and we could potentially see um, ourselves in a really awkward position the next turn if we don't go for that Geomancy, but um, I'm going to go for the fake out. I do want to try and maybe scout out a potential Haze. Um, so I'm just going to go for a Moonblast into the Tapu Fini here, rather than go for the Geomancy here. Tapu Fini going to switch out. Kyogre come in. Now I don't mind catching the Kyogre with a Moonblast. It is Primal Kyogre. You've always got to think, like always, I'm like so beady-eyed when it comes in and think, is it Scarfed? No, it's not. <laughs> Please, it's not. I'm done dealing with Scarf Kyogre. Uh, if we can get a special attack drop here, I mean, the other thing here was we could have had a pretty easy setup with our Geomancy and, like, just double-thinking ourselves here a little bit too much has uh, kind of cost us 
Slightly. Um, okay, so we do see the leftovers revealed on the Celestia here. I think one thing we've got a pretty easy switch into now is the Tapu Finion on our side of the field and maybe just scout out what this Kyogre Celestia wants to do and uh, just protect here because we can set up a Geomancy if we want but we have to be a little bit wary about that Celestia. Has got access probably to Leech Seed um, and those heavy slams will be hitting us for decent damage, although because Xerneas is so heavy, you can kind of alleviate that a little bit with an Intimidate or two, which is always useful. So we'll bring in Tapu Fini, it's going to be able to soak up those water type attacks, we'll keep Incineroar around for another day. We did identify in Team Preview how important that Incineroar will be for the late game potentially. We're just going to see the Kyogre protect here, as we are going to see a... It's a Leech Seed from the Celestina, okay, that's fine. Now one of the things we could do is Geomancy and then Heal Pulse, or Geomancy and just go for a Scald. Um, kind of tempted to Scald the Celestia because if we can get a cheeky little burn onto it, it makes things way easier for Xerneas going into the rest of this game. We can't avoid taking a Leech Seed, but uh, we do have Heal Pulse, so we can get around that somewhat. And as long as we get the Geomancy up here, We'll be able to take these water type attacks from the Kyogre a lot better and just getting that initial damage onto it with the Moonblast to make sure that those water spots up. If it is carrying it, aren't going to be hitting as hard as what uh, we potentially think they're going to do. Right, there's the boosts. Boost, boost, boost. There's the Scald, which is very nice. We do have to beat the Kyogre. Do we get the burn though? Get the burn! Finny on form! Here we go! There's a skull back, because we're attached to the ground, we don't get burned, which is good. Flash cannon, even better, you know. It is like, that's that's exactly what we want to see now. We're in it's such a nice place now just to heal pulse. And um, the burn doesn't even matter on the Celesteela, does it at all? Um, let's heal pulse and go for a moon blast. I mean, we could just dazzling gleam. There is the risk of a wide guard coming out here, um, which I don't really want to take. And we need to start pressuring the Celestealer now, so we'll Moonblast it with our um, Xerneas. We're going to see Kyogre switch out, just retreat, Tapu Fini come back onto the field now. I guess my opponent probably wants to alleviate the damage from this Scald that it's potentially doing, because they would have probably been in range there to, um, to pick up the knockout. We are able to get this heal pulse, get Xerneas back in fighting shape, and there's the leech seed. Oh, that is that is heartbreaking for my opponent. You need the leech seed there to kind of let this Celestia do some work. Tapu Fini now coming in for my opponent. It's still the threat of his for sure. We have to worry about. Um, but. Do we, ta do we go for a Moonblast into the Finny or do we just Dazzling Gleam? I think we probably just Dazzling Gleam Scald. There's still the risk of a Haze coming out from the opposing Finny for sure. And it wouldn't surprise me. But we're doing enough work now to kind of... Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> That's a little bit of a shame. I think we had a few rolls go in our favour early on. But we put ourselves in a position to get ourselves set up so we could take this game. Um, and I think we would have closed it out. Regardless of the rolls or not, uh, the Celestia, the match would have just been a lot more prolonged. But it does mean because we get that early victory here, uh, we might be able to squeeze a few games in today. So that would be ideal. Depends on how long the second game will be, but uh, we'll jump into it right now. And uh, hopefully it doesn't take too long to find our next opponent, as always. If it does, my friends, uh, we'll just cut out and come right back into it. We'll go Giovanni music for this next one. Okay, we'll be right back when we bump into our next opponent. And like magic, I don't even need to cut that because it's just sitting there for two seconds and we got our next one. So we'll hop straight into team preview. Okay, so our next opponent is playing QR code team. It's an interesting one. It's made up of Eveltal, Incineroar, Tapu Fini, Amoongus, Landorus and Xerneas. So we've got that X and Y combination here that we saw so popular in Sun and Moon and not so popular in the, the Ultra series, but I still think it's got quite a bit of potential here. It's kind of the standard team. You know, you've got the double Intimidate support there from the Landorus, Therian um, and the Incineroar, the Fake Out support there. Tapu Fini is the, the kind of key piece to this team in supporting everything. The Amoongus is there to shut down any 
opposing flying type threats that my opponent will see um, and then the Xerneas is going to be the thing that tries to set up I would say that it's either Z-move maybe on the Evaltal or it's probably more likely to be a Salt Vest um, so I think one of our main things that we need to try and do um, against this team is is get rid of the the Finny before we do um, anything else so I think what we'll do is bring Serena to this one we'll lead Serena and Xerneas here um, actually, one of the things we could potentially do is lead in Cineral, Xerneas, bring Serena, and then I think mm, bring the Rayquaza as well, yeah. And that should be enough, I think, to deal with this sort of team. So I feel pretty confident with this. Let's get straight into it. So good luck to my opponent with your lovely lipstick and your fine, fine dress. So, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I need to stop doing this. I'm like yeah you're all gonna think I'm super weird but it's just for the 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 um the entertainment factor and these down screens before we get into the the um the games and I have a bit of a, a sporadic mind with random things pop into it all the time but I hope you guys appreciate it right we're gonna see the incineral and Xenius come out it's like playing snap all over again um and incineral and Xenius come out for us we do maybe have the faster fake out um, but I'm going to try for the Geomancy anyway here. Um, I think the worst thing that could happen is potential roll on the opposing Incineroar. That would be that would be terrible. <laughs> but at the same time, we might drag in our Finny and then we can get rid of their Geomancy. We do get the fake out into the Xerneas, uh, where are they faking out into us. Very, very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Okay. Um, now, let's do a Mansi. Um, and let's snarl. Yeah, let's snarl. Let's just sit in front of it and snarl. We're probably making the exact same attacks each turn, both of us, to be honest. They're probably snarl as well. <laughs> Going to be that old chestnut going around this barbecue a few too many times. So we'll see the Geomancy on the opposing Xerneas. We're definitely speed tying between our Xerneases. Ignore that. That's one of the beauties I always think about running max speed Xerneas. If, um, you know, at the very worst, you're always going to be losing a speed tie, which is not the worst thing in the world, but it also helps you indicate what speed tiers other opposing Xerneas are going for as well. So we'll match, match. Who's going to get the Snarl off first, or are we going to see a U-turn? Oh, it's Flare Blip. Okay. We should be able to take this pretty comfortably. Yeah, that's not too bad. That's not so bad. And we get the Snarl off, which is very good. Um, and we can protect Xerneas the next turn and go for another Snarl. Which is always the thing that we like to do. Again, if we see a roll from the opposing Xerneas, it puts us in a terrible position. But we do get the Snarl off as well, so we're kind of checking the opposing Xerneas along the way. So it's still not the worst thing in the world. We do protect. Maybe the opposing Xerneas protects. No, just Dazzling Gleam, which King Cat will be able to take pretty comfortably. Yeah, there's a low kick. Ooh, 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 ooh. Not enough to proc our berry, though. Incineroar voids and the Xerneas takes the hit. So that's fine. That's fine. I do really like low kick on Incineroar. I wonder if this is Preston's build um, that he featured and did so well with earlier in the season. Um, now we can go Dazzling Gleam, and I think what we'll do is. Hmm, I don't really want to bring anything in, so I'm just going to U turn out onto the opposing Incineroar. Uh, because, yeah, then potentially we can get rain as a Moonblast from the opposing Xerneas. Ooh, it's into our Incineroar. Do we hang on? Nah. Oh, poor cat. You did so well, though, my good cat friend. And, yeah, we're not going to be able to... Okay. Take another. But we can potentially get... Our Serena in now and go help in hand Dazzling Gleam and that should be enough to get both targets. I'm hoping. 
would be incredible if that was the case. Um, yeah, let's go Dazzle. I'd definitely get the Incineroar. And let's go Helping Hand. Helping Hand! I love this attack, I really do. It's not an attack, but it's a support option. It's one of my favourite support options that we've got in the entire Pokemon series. It's always something that I've really enjoyed using throughout the VGC scene. If you Ah, we lose the speed tie. That's really, that's really disappointing. But I mean, we are taking those pretty comfortably. Uh, Xenia's still in a nice place. We don't quite get the opposing Xenia's, but uh, it's not the worst. I think you've got to be careful if you bring in either Eveltal or something like Landorus here. Yeah, because we can we can get the Eveltal with um, uh, Moonblast, definitely. You can't calc Eve Eveltal to take a plus two Moonblast. Um, and I think what we'll do is we'll go for a, a U-turn into the Xerneas. Yeah, with, with Serena. That should be enough. Maybe not. Sucker Punch, Queenie Majesty blocking, so that's a little bit unfortunate for my opponent. And my opponent's winning every single speed tie. Come on, give us a break. We get the uh, the Moonblast off there. Um, and if the U-turn isn't enough, we've got Rayquaza to come in with extreme speed, so that'll be able to pick up the, the knockout pretty easy onto the Cernius. But Serena saying, no, no, no. I don't want you sticking around. So Serena coming back. Which is nice, we'll get Ray in and um, just showing again, you know we had a game last week with our Ultra Necrozma Mazonius team where we got a double Geomancy up and just Incineroar absolutely crushed us with those snarls, we couldn't get any momentum in the game um, and it just sh again shows how useful that is and having that option of a not having that option just makes so much of a difference doesn't it? We see the landers come in, it's going to get the Intimidate off onto both targets. But we can Moonblast Mega Evolve, and uh, that should be, um, oh, Dragon Ascent, that should be enough to deal with the Landorus. Even if it's Scarfed, we're in a great position, and we might see the full fit, which means we probably aren't going to be able to get a third game in today, which is incredible. And I hope you're all looking forward to having a third game featured, because I always love being able to feature extra games. You know, we do feature two, and it keeps it to that 30-minute mark, which I think is probably as much as I want to do for a daily episode uh, for you guys um, even though I'd love to do more but we do streams on a Tuesday which is going to be tonight so if you're around we will be streaming over on Twitch this evening 7pm we'll be playing some something very fun so do come by hang out it's always a nice evening we've got such a nice community here on the channel um, so it's uh, it's always nice to have newer members join us over there and play some battle spot and just chill out talk about pokemon stuff and just general things that are going on we'll go with legendary pokemon got another high rated japanese player so we'll go straight into the team preview oh this looks like a tasty team it is a bit of a mirror match we've got the xerneas and the rayquaza there the incinero tapu finney bishop very interesting here from my opponent and the amoongus so what are we looking at here i'm saying x-ray team it's going to be a mirror more than anything else it makes it very difficult for us to utilize our intimidate support here though with that bishop being something so predominant for my opponent um hmm ha ah, what do we do what do we do here because we need intimidate ideally to deal with the rayquaza um i don't really want to lead off with xerneas either um and i don't believe we have high jump kick on our serena no we do not. Mm. Do we lead our restricteds? Oh, this is really, really, really difficult. Um, I think what we'll do is lead Xerneas and Serena. We'll bring in Cineroar and Rayquaza. Like, Incineroar does all right against Bishop as long as it's not got low kick. So, outside of that, we should be all right. I'm going to lock in with those. We'll jump straight into... I'm in screen and we'll wait for our opponent to lock in. It's not going to be an easy game. And we haven't brought Tapu Fini here, which makes the Amoongus a little bit more threatening. Look at that cute little Como O hat. Or is it uh, um, one of the pre evolutions? Hakma O or something. I don't know. It's probably Como O, isn't it? I don't know. I haven't bought that suit because it's so expensive and I don't have the money in game. So I just spend it on random things like Pokeballs and other stuff. Waste my money. So we're going to see Incineroar Xerneas come out for my opponent. This is one of the things that I didn't want to have us fall into the trap of here. You know, 
because of the, how threatening that bishop was, it's always something that my opponent can do is, is take advantage of that threat in team preview and lead off with something so devastating like this. And if you don't lead appropriately to it, then there's not a lot you can do. Uh, right, I think we'll go for the Geomancy and we'll switch straight into our Incineroar. There's no way my opponent fakes out here with the um, Serena out on the field. So should be pretty safe to get our Incineroar in and it allows us the room to have fake out going into the next turn. Um, okay, and once we've got our boosted Xerneas up and running, it's just about managing it and making sure. Like, we're not going to be able to deny my opponent getting their Geomancy up. And the, the, if we don't Geomancy ourselves here, then we're just falling so far behind in the game. It's going to be over very quickly. So we need to Geomancy ourselves here. We need to get an Intimidate onto the Incineroar to reduce the damage from a potential Flare Blitz from that Incineroar. We don't see a fake out, so that's good. My opponent not detecting that, which is excellent for us. Um, we'll probably see a Flare Blitz from the Incineroar. That's what I could imagine. It might go for a, um, a Flare Blitz into the Serena to get rid of that for the late game. Because Serena is very good, especially when Rayquaza comes in late game, to deny those extreme speeds. Especially if we've taken a lot of damage already with our Xerneas. Right, there's our Geomancy. Again, losing speed ties every time. I'm wondering now, I'm like... Is Azernius actually max speed or have we played a different one? Let me have a quick look. Uh, we're running a slow Azernius. So, just ignore everything I've said <laughs> about everything because we're not losing speed ties at all. We're just a slow Azernius. Right, we're running a bit more of a bulkier one, which makes sense in this sort of team. It means you can take things from a pause and requires us a little bit better. Um, and especially with the double intimidate, but I think I'd probably prefer to run the Xerneas I've ran all season Which is the max speed one with quite a bit of bulk in defense a little bit in HP and no I don't like seeing Amoongus at all um, Okay <sighs> Right Three thousand gleam We have to fake out the Xerneas I think but we can't really afford to I think we've got to uh -huh. It's difficult. The Amoongus is a real pain. I'm going to Moonblast the Xerneas. No, I am going to Dazzle and Gleam. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to Dazzle and Gleam. Because I feel like... Well, I don't know if the Xerneas protects. I don't feel like it would. It's just if it does protect... I'm going to Dazzle and Gleam, yeah. I'm going to Dazzle and Gleam, and I'm going to fake out the Amoongus. The inclusion of Amoongus here for my opponent. Okay, so that's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. Okay, that's fine. Oh, and Amoongus carry and protect. That's not like a, an Amoongus we are used to seeing. Hmm. Now we've got to get Ray in. Ray is our only hoop going to this next one. Uh, we've got to protect our Xerneas here. <laughs> Try. Try, try, try and get a Flare Blitz off into this Amoongus. I don't know if we're going to be able to, though. It puts on a lot of pressure. Amoongus with Protect in the Ultra Series a lot better than no Protect like we've been seeing it run throughout. Ooh. Ah, so cheeky, so cheeky. Bringing in the Incineroar. Probably removing our Incineroar from play. Mm. Yeah, the opponent's making some nice reads, nice plays here, so we're not... Uh, let's move last since it's a, uh, the Incineroar, so we do lose it. Hmm. A little bit unfortunate, but it's not the end of the world. It is not the end of the world because we're going to be able to bring in our Serena. Good old Serena. Um, and we do have access to the Helping Hand, don't we now? So we can help in Hand, Moonblast, help in Hand, Dazzle and Gleam. Um, the problem is. We are the Slaw Xerneas, which makes things a bit difficult, but Helping Hand, Dazzling Gleam. No, maybe Helping Hand, Moonblast is the better play here. Because then we can put the Xerneas potentially in range for an extreme speed to take it down. But yeah, and I think we've got a plan for that. Oh, 
I don't know, I don't think my opponent protects the Xerneas here. I'm just trying to think of different situations where they could maybe gain an advantage. So now we're going straight back out. Mungo's going to hit the field once again. Um, does the Xerneas just protect here? And then you've got access to Rage Powder the next turn. Now it goes for the Moonblast. It's going to be into Serena. Okay, that's fine. This opens the door for Rayquaza to come in. But I mean we take a plus two Moonblast because Serena's just a boss anyway. Uh, we do get the Helping Hand Moonblast. If we can get this special attack drop as well, that would be incredible. But if we put it, probably put it in range for a dozen Gleam now. Um, but we can't just sit freely in front of this Amoongus. Um, okay, I'm going to U-turn out onto the Amoongus and try and get Rayquaza in. We probably lose Serena to uh, um, a Dazzling Gleam here, I'd imagine. Because he's Rage Powder. No. And it is Moonblast, yeah. And we're going to see a Spore into a Spore into Amoongus. Uh, the, yeah into the Xerneas slot, into the Protect. That's what I was trying to say. Uh, so we'll get Rayquaza in now. Um, now we're all right, now we're all right, because we're kind of covering the Among Us, and we've got the extreme speed we can take advantage of, but the Dazzling Gleam will be enough to get the Xerneas, um, and the combination here should be all right. The problem is we're taking a lot of damage in the process of doing this so when the Rayquaza comes onto the field for my opponent they're going to be in a way stronger position than we are because we'll have likely taken a lot of damage prior to this turn even if we're able to clear the field here and imagine the Amoongus switches out um, and the Incineroar maybe come in oh we could see a Protect here as well the Xerneas has got to be worried about an extreme speed for sure um, but I don't think I can afford to do that yeah, I think I need to go Dragon Ascent into the Amoongus. Um, and I think my opponent needs to attack the Rayquaza to put it set it up for a win late game. So, Xerneas actually protects. If this Amoongus doesn't protect, this is massive for us. I mean massive for us because... Ooh. We're going to get the Amoongus. I don't agree with this player. Unless it's got a Cobra Berry. It has got the Cobra Berry. Is it going to be able to survive? I don't know if it will, you know. I know the Cobra Berry myself. It doesn't leave you with very much health. Nah, it's not enough. The Dazzle's enough to get it. Was that a critical hit as well, maybe? That's a bit unfortunate if it was. I didn't see the text, unfortunately, in my in, in, on all of this mysterious air going around. My eyesight is all hazy. Right. Incineral coming back onto the field. So the first thing we need to do here is just double protect. Because if we can preserve our... I mean, one of the things we could do... Oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't. Like, I'm tempted to go for extreme speed into the Xerneas here, but I can't risk a fake out. It's like 50-50 that we get it right. Um, but you've got to imagine the Rayquaza is in the back for my opponent. We've not seen it yet, but I'd imagine that's the last thing. For my opponent to come in. Alright. Now I think we just dazzle and go for another Dragon Ascent into the Incineroar here because that should clear it. It'll take us down to our Sash. And then we've only got the Rayquaza to deal with after that, which is alright. It's alright, isn't it? Moonblast, where are you going? Into Zanius. Hey. No special attack drop. Do we get the Zanius? We do, we do, we do. And Rikaza's still got his sash, so everything is fine in the world. And hopefully this is enough to get the, the Incineroar. That's the big question here, because that's what we need to do. If our sash gets broken, then things aren't looking great for us. Come on. Yes, come on, Rikaza. You boss, man. You boss, man. Yes, so we're able to do this. <laughs> I can't believe it. So we're having a good time so far. Let's hope we can clean up whatever's left in the back, which is the Rayquaza. Ah, it's still not over by any means, but I feel like two on one makes it a little bit easier for us to manage. Uh, we'll just go Moonblast and we'll go Dragon Ascent and to the Rayquaza. And I think with the combination we've got here, we should be able to close this one up. My opponent just forfeits and gives us the game. So, very good game to my opponent. We've had some really high rated opponents in today's episode, which has just been incredible. And we've done so well with the team as well, which has made it even more 
um, really enjoyable. So, guys, it's probably been the best episode we've had in the Ultra Series so far, so I hope you've enjoyed it. We've had some incredible games so far in the series, and to be able to say that so early on is really nice. So, I'm going to wrap things up there. We're just under 30 minutes, so that's perfect. Have an amazing day. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on today's episode, and I'll see you very soon for the next one. So, until then, guys, take care, and bye-bye.